a very good evening class 10th in today's class we are doing a topic known as displacement reaction this particular topic is a part of chapter 1 as well as chapter 3 in class 10th the chemistry syllabus now for you to understand the displacement reaction as the word says places have to be changed one place of a metal is changed by the help of the other so one metal is displaced by the other now which means you have a metal a this metal is dropped into a salt solution of another metal b now if this reaction is happening means a is able to remove b from the salt solution itself goes into the salt solution and the poor b is standing outside which is the reason because A is more reactive than B. That is the cause of displacement reaction. So the metal that you add into the salt solution should be more reactive. Which means for such a reaction to happen, your agenda would be to check whether the metal added is more reactive than the metal in the solution. And how would you do that? By means of this reactivity series. In this reactivity series, I would advise that you learn it up. The metals on top are the more reactive metals, while the metals at the bottom are the less reactive metals, which means if these metals are added to the salt solution of these, then the reaction would happen because these metals are more reactive than these. But if the salt solution is for these metals and you add these metals to them. To the salt solution of any of these, if you add these metals, there won't be any reaction because the metal needs to be more reactive than the metal in the salt solution. Which means if this is true and I add metal B to salt solution of A when you know it that the metal A is more reactive which means this is strong and metal B is less reactive which means the metal B will not be able to remove A from the salt solution because the metal A is more reactive under such situation there will be no reaction no displacement happening now I would be doing this topic in detail by taking examples but before I do that I need you to understand that iron salt solutions of iron are green in color and the salt solutions of copper are blue in color. I have deliberately used those colored pens so that you remember it for life. Also. When you are asked for the copper metal, this is reddish brown colored metal. But its salt solution is blue in color. This information you should know before we move ahead. I would be moving on with the examples. I have deliberately written the reactivity series for your convenience. This top most of the reactivity series are the more reactive metals and the lower end is the less reactive metals fine so let's begin with example number one the first example that I've taken is I take a iron metal piece and add it to zinc sulfate aqueous now I have not given you any color this is a colorless solution the salt solutions are colored only if they are of iron and copper is the information that you should know in class 10th so when you add a piece of iron into zinc sulfate solution, will the reaction happen or not depends on iron. Is iron more reactive? If iron is more reactive, the reaction will happen. You will not check the reactivity of zinc. If you check it, let's say, let's say if you check the reactivity of zinc, what do you conclude? Zinc is above iron, which means zinc is more reactive, which means the bond between zinc and sulfate is very strong, which means this will not break because iron is less reactive there will be no reaction no displacement would happen coming to the second example what happens if I take a zinc piece 
and add it to ferrous sulfate aqueous solution. This is a green colored solution for your information. What do you check? You check whether this metal is more reactive or not. If it is more reactive, it will remove this metal. Check. This is zinc. This is iron. And zinc is more reactive than iron. That is why the reaction would happen. What would happen? Iron would be replaced from sulfate. So you would form zinc sulfate and your iron would move out. This is black in color. This is colorless. So your solution will change from green to colorless and you would see black colored iron deposited over zinc. Moving on to the third example. The third example is I drop a piece of copper into iron sulfate solution which is green in color. Now will the reaction happen? What do you need to check? Is copper capable of removing iron? Is copper more reactive than iron? Check. Copper is here, iron is here. Which is more reactive? Iron is more reactive which means this bond is strong which means copper will not be able to remove iron from the salt solution. Coming to the next example, I take a piece of iron and I drop it into copper sulphate aqueous. This copper sulphate aqueous as I already said copper solutions are blue solution in color. Will the reaction happen? Please check the metal. If iron is more reactive then it will cause copper to be removed from copper sulphate. Is iron more reactive? Yeah, this is iron and this is copper. So iron is more reactive than copper. That is why the reaction would happen and what would be formed? Your product would be, it would lead to the formation of FeSO4 which would be green in color and your copper will be separated out. This is reddish brown in color. So normally this question is asked, give your observation. The, what would happen if <coughs> a piece of iron is dropped into copper sulfate solution? Give your observation. So you would give two observations. One, the blue colored solution changes to green solution. And the black metal gets a deposition of reddish brown copper on it. So there are two observations which are normally asked. Fine. Moving ahead with a few more examples. What happens when a gold ring is dropped into common salt solution? What is common salt? NaCl aqueous. Now will the reaction happen or not is the question. You need to check your reactivity series. Gold you very well know is the last member and sodium is much more reactive. So gold is much less reactive than Sodium, since gold is less reactive, nothing is going to happen in this reaction. Fine. Again, coming to the second part. What happens when aluminium foil is dropped into ferrous sulfate solution? So, your aluminium solid is dropped into ferrous sulfate aqueous. You need to check whether the reaction would happen or not. Your sole means is the reactivity series. We are talking about aluminium and iron. Aluminium is dropped into iron, which is more reactive out of these two. Aluminium is more reactive, which means aluminium is capable of removing iron because aluminium is more reactive than iron. The reaction is bound to happen. Please let's write the products. Iron would be separated out and aluminium will combine with sulphate. So Al and SO4. Aluminium has a valency of 3, sulphate has a valency of 2. This is your solution you get a black colored iron deposited. This was green in color and the solution becomes colorless. So the observations will be black deposition over aluminum foil and the solution changes from green to colorless. Coming to the next question. Can you store silver nitrate aqueous in an aluminum bottle? If you have an aluminum bottle and you add silver nitrate solution into it, are you able to store it? Can you keep it in it? Will the reaction happen or will it not? You very well know silver falls under the less reactive metals while aluminium is much more reactive. So aluminium will displace silver which means the advice is no. 
you cannot store because aluminium is more reactive than silver the reaction is bound to happen and what would happen aluminium will start reacting with silver nitrate will remove silver from the solution and itself will combine with nitrate so aluminium combines with nitrate aluminium has a valency of 3 nitrate has a valency of 1 so your formula of aluminium nitrate would be this fine coming to the next what would happen if a silver coin is dropped into a gold chloride solution so your silver coin gold has two valencies i have taken the valency 3 a gold chloride solution what would happen will the reaction happen or not everything here depends upon the reactivity series let's check the reactivity of gold and silver which is more reactive silver is more reactive than gold so silver is more reactive it can displace gold since silver is more reactive than gold so silver will displace gold and the reaction is bound to happen your product formed would be silver will form the silver chloride silver has a valency of 1 and gold will be separated out so balancing the equation has to be done you have 3 here because of these 3 and you would have a 3 for gold also and silver also takes a 3 coming to the next example this is the last example that I am taking. Can you keep gold ornaments, this means gold solid, in silver nitrate solution, AG NO3 aqueous. Can you keep your gold ornaments in silver nitrate solution? Now, which is more reactive? Silver is more reactive than gold. So, since silver is more reactive than gold, therefore, this bond here is strong because silver is more reactive so gold will not be able to break out silver from this silver nitrate so no such reaction therefore the answer would be yes as there is no reaction between your gold ornaments and silver nitrate solution so you can easily store your gold coins in a silver nitrate solution i hope you are clear with the concepts there are more videos on the chapter of metals and non-metals unit 3 class 10 for you to watch and get the concept clarified bless you kids stay well stay safe stay inside and do well in life